And hey, what's good, all? And we are live with another Nerds of the Roundtable episode 28, 28, because well, 20, 27 was tabletop day. So, don't remember. Yeah, we are back on Facebook this time. Uh, we are also, of course, hopefully you're either watching YouTube, listening through iTunes. iTunes, yes, you guys get it this week. Last week wouldn't have been a good one. Um, so we decided not to share it on there because it just wouldn't have sounded right. You don't want to listen to us play a game the whole time like Ooh, that. That would be so yeah. boring, especially, like, especially a card game, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, no, no, we're good. We're good. I'll play so. this. I'll draw two <laughs> cards. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll play this one too. Yeah, no. I don't have my chat up. What did someone just chatted on there? Look, I, I can read, but not that, that well. It's Brandy, and it says, Kirk is jelly. <laughs> Sucker. Nice. Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> tell him we're laughing right now for him. <laughs> we got, tell him we got all kinds of good comics and stuff, and he missed out on the uh, badass pop. <laughs> yeah, there was all kinds of alien... There was all kinds of Alien Covenant <laughs> stuff and Prometheus yeah. stuff they were giving out. But yeah. Dude, it was only, he, only to people that were there in person. Yep. So. And it was the first 10, and we were in the first 10. So, sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, did you just share it? Uh, oh, there we are. Uh, stand by one second. Yeah. No, I got it. Never mind. I got it. So, anyways. Yeah. So, this is Nerds of the Round Table, episode 28. We have free comic book day. So, we had all kinds of fun at All Seas. Went and uh, represent the local comic book shop, you know, where we normally go. Um, but first and foremost, like we always like to do, of course, my name's Jamie. And uh, we've got no nickname yet still. We still need to figure something out. We um, really got to get on that. <laughs> Ooh, turn that down from earlier. Hey, my, my, mine's yeah. muted. Don't look at me. No, that was mine because I didn't. I had it turned up earlier watching YouTube. And it, then, of course, we've got to my right the co-host of... Both nerds and unleashing, Ryan, aka the Silent Ninja. What's up, y'all? <laughs> what a player! Love it, love it. And then, of course, to my left, we've got my co-host from Blow on This, you, you. Mister OMD, one and only. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, um, so free comic book day. Uh, I will have a vlog showing off some of this stuff too. You know, we'll try and show it as much as possible on this because it is a little ways away. So hopefully you'll see it. But uh, I'll try, I'll take a picture or something to pop it into while I'm editing this uh, tomorrow morning or something like that. So um, for our oh, got a couple people joining. Yeah, yeah looks like Brandy. Yeah, all looks kinds like of people. So welcome to the podcast. So all right, who wants to go first? You know, just I guess let's make some rounds of everything we picked up. We won't show it all off at once. So, Dale, you know, yes, since, you're, dear. since you're new to the whole comic Did book Did you say world, I was nude? Nude. <laughs> Dude, really? Yeah, it looks like he has clothes on, but he really doesn't. Yeah, that's so. just makeup. Oh, baby. What's up? Is, is yours freaking out, too? Because um, I'm freaking out. Oh, can't see my face because of the mic. That's the whole point. Well, <laughs> you know. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> All right, let's get this party started. So, um, who wants to go first? Show off their first comic that I'll, they picked up I'll today. I, I say go. So. I go with the. I say go with the expert in the comic book world. You know, <laughs> or toys. You know, we got some toys here. So, so one of the cool things about All Seas, at least this year, and uh, I guess the last couple of years, uh, is they also give out some little collectibles and things like that. Sometimes, so if you come in, not only do you get a couple of free comics, but you might get something special. And in this case, they were handing out these little guys, which are called, I guess, Kawaii cubes like Hawaii, but with a K, so Kawaii Cubes. And so they let my oldest son pick one out, so he picked out the uh, Batman versus Superman Armored Batman. So looks like the video feed's a little delayed, so I'll just hold it up and assume that people are seeing it. <laughs> yeah, it will always be a delayed on there. So And vicious, then uh, they were also delayed. handing out little buttons, so uh, I picked a Wonder Woman button. Uh, you know, really excited for the for the movie coming out this year. So I figured time to show my Wonder Woman love. So, yeah, a couple of little trinkets. Cool. Yeah. Well, of course, I got which I guess I could have opened it up 
to show it off, you know, oh, whatever, yeah. if you can really see it. Uh, hopefully you can. But I also picked up the Wonder Woman one, and he missed out. They had a Rocket and Groot one. Of course, we have Guardians. Please uh, go check out my review on you know, my YouTube channel there, Nerdology5280. So I'm sorry, where at? I missed that. Can you say it again, sir? It's uh, www.youtube.com backslash Nerdology5280. <laughs> yeah, and if you're watching the you video know. live, try to you know share the link and everything on your timeline yes. and whatnot. So uh, you know anyone else that's interested in comics that might not know what we're doing here, have a chance to to tune in as, and view as well. Show them what's yeah. up. You want to pull that mic a little bit towards you, the big mic, then I can at least not be blocked completely. That's good, right there. So hopefully the sound is pretty good. We're trying something new here since it's with Facebook. We're uh, going to work on a few things with it and uh, hopefully build it better and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, I picked up, of course. I mean, it's hard to see all the way from here. But, yeah, it's a rocket and Groot. I just saw Sean joined here. He's the one that I got to, uh, he was my lovely date for the night to go see it. You know, I wore my cute little dress for it. You know, we had a great time. We held hands, you know, high highs and everything, huh? <laughs> exactly. Right. You know, he picked me up. It was, you know, it was, it was sweet. You know, we had a good time, had a beer together, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and then of course I got the Wonder Woman one also. So those were my two little things. And also there is something else that we each got. But you have to wait for next week's Cherry on Pop because I already recorded this week's that will be coming out later tonight from this re uh, live stream. It will already be out by the time the uh, video drops. But uh, we got a cool little pop that none of us expected to get. Kind of a little surprising. I, I was pretty I was pretty stoked about it. I mean, I, yeah. I, I was fine. So and, it's, a, it's a great character, you know. So I was excited at it. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Not yes. expecting that at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, and by the way, Dale, it looks like you're uh, trying to choke down the, uh... well, you know, <laughs> you see both of us a little ways away. It's kind of funny. I just look over and I see you and I'm like, yep. Yeah. So it, it's like Anyways. this. <laughs> it's like this. All right, so <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gay, but twenty bucks is twenty bucks. Yeah, hey, got to do what you got to do. You Damn know, straight. sometimes you got to make a living. Got to make a living. Yeah. Anyways, back to comics. Uh, what'd you pick up? Uh, show off something you got there. So, I guess you know, obviously the free comic, you know, the freak stuff. But so uh, just show off one, and we'll just keep going around. Whichever one you want to show first. Oh, let's go with that yeah. one. You know. <laughs> so your, your grim fairy tales. Yeah. They're kind of grim. I don't know, but no. So I'm falling, huh? I don't isn't know. isn't grim, grim fairy tales? You know, I'm not too familiar with it. You know, I haven't really read any of them, but I do know enough about it. Where that's the real fairy tales. That's where all these fairy tales that we've got in the past. That's where it comes from. Where it started because it was one big book, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was Brothers Grimm. Yeah, um, Brothers Grimm. That and was if, it, and yeah. if you look at the the origin of the, a lot of the fairy tales, mm -hmm. they're a lot darker than what. Oh yeah. Oh, they're a lot darker. Mm -hmm. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's. I mean, I you'll have to you have to let me know how that is, or maybe I'll have to borrow it from you and read it once you're done reading it. You know, I'm kind of curious. You know, I'm always looking for some good, uh, newer you know comics to start reading. So um, yeah, it just it, it just kind of caught my attention. I was like, I remember the, you know Grim, Grim Fairy Tales when I was young, and I was like, huh, interesting. They got a comic book. All right, I, I'm interested. You got my attention. Oh yeah, and the uh, the Grim Fairy Tales comic series always has you know gorgeous women in it. The the artists that they get to draw, you know, it's got that kind of '90s feel where they're all just these very sultry characters in there too. So. Sultry. Oh, sultry. I'm sorry, I, I can't read this. <laughs> so you might want to take that back. It's got some adult themes in there. That, oh uh, gracious. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, those are cool. I actually like the uh, the publisher that puts that puts those out, Xenoscope. Uh, they actually have a pretty good presence, usually at Denver Comic Con too. A bunch really? to pick from. So if you like that, you know, come to Denver Comic Con this year, and you probably find a lot more from that publisher. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Next up, what'd you get? Yeah. One of them. Uh, well, I brought my son, my older son, with me again this year, like I did last year, but uh, he picked a couple out, but I'll, I'll show off the one that I picked out for my daughter first. And then we'll get Maxton in here. Yeah, you know, we'll have him do his. Come in and show off his. So um, I picked out the uh, DC Superhero Girls. Um, I got one last year. My daughter enjoyed it. You know, she's 
not huge into into comics, but if it uh, if it gets her to read, then whatever. Uh, but she likes some of these characters. She likes Bumblebee a lot nice, uh, nice. In, in this one. So I like the Batgirl, the way she looks, you know, with like the hoodie and stuff. It's kind of funny. And her bat pack has uh, bat wings and stuff. So I like it. So, yeah, I picked up the uh, DC Superhero Girls for my daughter. Nice. Nice. Well, I guess I'll, I'll show off one that none of you got. Um and of course, I mean, if you haven't oh, I, seen my cherry on pops that I got, I, I know, saw that. I, I saw that one. And I was and like, yeah. I was like, yeah, that's de- definitely yeah. <laughs> uh, right, up, right up his alley. And I haven't read any, and I forgot I was going to look at the trades that they had there because they had some trades, you know, that I was going to look at, and I completely forgot. Um, but I picked up uh, Rick and Morty. I know it's a little hard to see. But like I said, I'm going to uh, add in a segment right towards the end of this, uh, real quick, showing off all of our comics that we got. So explaining through it again and everything. So, so then you can see everything that we, all the goodness that we have. That's for the YouTube video. Of course you can't see it for, uh, it's kind of hard to see when you're listening to an audio version, you yeah. know, I mean, unless you got like ears that can, s- with eyeballs in it, that, you have to have you know, some re- really amazing weird, imagination. Yeah, daredevil ears or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. TJ still trying to find us here. Yeah. So, um, Tell her to go to your page. That's what I just told her. I was like, and go, go right there, I, I just shared it. Go, <laughs> go find it on mine. Yeah. So it's on, it's on mine too. I mean, anyone that's listening, like we keep saying, share it, you know, please. Um, so other people that, you know, if they like comics, you know, they can join in on the conversation, say what's up, see what's going on, you know, and whatnot. So, Give um, some grief. so yeah, Rick and Morty, pick that up. What's up next there? Uh, OMD. What else did I get? Let's see here. No. Went with went with the uh, good old Zelda because you know the the gamer side of me kicked out. Might as well just show off. Admittedly, I got yeah. I, I got a little confused trying to opening it though, because it's backwards. Yeah. So the Zelda, it's um, I'm not too familiar with the story and the art. Uh, the guy that did it, Akira, um, but this is based off the Twilight Princess. I don't know if it's actually takes from the game any of the stuff but i it's it looks like actually it's got also ocarina of time in it mm-hmm. i didn't see that yeah so, i caught that and i was like oh well, that's interesting yeah. but it's all black and white which is interesting that's very yeah a lot, a lot of the mangas are like that my, yeah my son has a few of the actual like smaller size mangas he's got like the first three ocarina of times and also a majora's mask but uh yeah the uh, akira himakawa is actually two people that write and draw together under the name Akira Himakawa. Mm. Uh, so it's a, I want to say it's a man and a woman and they, they do the stories and stuff together. It's like a two person team and that's like their pen name. But yeah, so it, it kind of adds a little bit more to the story from Twilight Princess. And then of course there's the short from, from Ocarina of Time as well. Yeah. So of course, I mean, as you saw, all three of us got it, you know, it's Zelda. I mean, we're, I, I've got the newest one, which I'm still playing, you know, so why not? I, I may be sharing this with uh, with Trina because, you know, she's all about the Zelda, so. Oh, there you go. There you go. Wow. <laughs> she might be interested in that one. <laughs> well, since we got more what, next up there, uh, Ryan, uh, if they have, I think you got one more that none of us got, yes. I believe, because I think the rest. Yeah, because all three of us got mm. me and you yep. both have these and then all yeah. three of us so both got, got that one. yeah I don't know yeah about that so, one. Yeah. so all right. you got one more that we can show off after that and then yep. finish up the so the people that actually run free comic book day didn't select a comic from this publisher so this publisher elected to do their own free comic for the day and uh, that publisher was Aspen Comics so they have a free Aspen comic book which is Aspen Universe Decimation So last year they did one that was called Aspen Universe Revelations, and it was a story that pretty much created a shared universe for all the Aspen comics. Uh, You know, they have a couple of different franchises that are really popular, and they kind of merged them together. You know, it was two that were created by the founder of the company, Michael Turner. It was Aspen and Soulfire. And there's a couple others that are part of that as well. So this one just has to deal with some more ramifications of now having a shared universe. And uh, it kind of comes right at the launch of a few new series. They have all new Soulfire that just started. There's an all new uh, 
Fathom that's coming out. There's a couple others. There's a series right now that's called No World that just launched a few weeks ago. Uh, and then, of course, there's Bubble Gun and a, a few other zoo hunters that are, you know, kind of creator owned and all that. So, yeah, I picked up the uh, Aspen Universe Decimation. Pretty excited to give that a check out. All right. And then, well, before we dive into the other ones that we have, you have one more there, Dale, that none of us picked up. So what'd you get? Oh, let's see here. Uh, Attack on Titan, which, again, it had that uh, you know, gaming feel to it. Do you know anything about Attack on Titan? Not a goddamn thing, <laughs> but I'm going to find out. So Attack on Titan is another Japanese um, anime show that they have. Um, as far as I know, because I haven't seen, I haven't really watched much of it, but I do know the premises. So basically what it is, is it's a bunch of these titans and they like to eat people. That's what they do. They eat the people. As far as I know, I don't know much more past that. But they recently just, uh, it's only got one season. It's a huge following for it. Second season either just dropped recently or is getting ready to drop. Um, and then they dropped a live action. Uh, they did two live action movies. It's two parts. So imagine them trying to create a live you know, action with these big titans that, you know. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so yeah, Attack on Titan's interesting. So you have to let us know how it is. You know, I, 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 you know, I'm a little curious, you know. Yeah. Um, all right. So next up, we have a couple that uh, uh, some of us got. The first up, uh, let's go with between Ryan and I. We picked up. We I haven't read issue two yet. He has, um, but I need to dive into it still. Uh, but it's Exo Manowar. Featuring Bloodshot Salvation. So it's from Valiant Comics. Um, he's more familiar with the series, so I'll let him dive into it more. Because he read, you read last year's, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I've, you know, I've picked up all of the Valiant. The I've always other picked ones. up the Valiant free comic book day stuff. The one from last year was um, 4001 AD yeah. number zero, because that was their big summer event uh-huh. last year. So. But didn't they have an, a different Exo Man of War 2? This is like the second series yeah, so of it Yeah, so this is pretty much volume two. So Valiant Comics started republishing themselves, you know, under new leadership and ownership and everything in about 2012, give or take. Um, and Exo Man of War is their... I mean, if you... Gonna, or if you're going to compare him to a hero, he would be like Valiant's version of Superman. You know, he's their all-powerful hero as far as that power level kind of thing. So uh, Exo Manowar has always been their flagship title. They did, I want to say it was almost 40 or 50 issues in Volume 1, and they just launched Volume 2 with a new number one this year. And so this provides some background story for that. Uh, the main character, Arik of Dacia, is from like the 4th century, and he was actually kidnapped by some aliens way back in time who are very technologically advanced. And that's kind of mm -hmm. how he gets this armor, which is called the Exo Man of War. And with it, it gives him you know time traveling abilities, and he has the abilities to re regenerate and things like that, strength and all that. So that's what uh, whoop, that's what this character is and so this will provide some okay interesting okay stuff. So, and of course it also features a little uh, bloodshot as well who's probably their next best you know if you're gonna if you're gonna look at bloodshot and kind of figure out who he is he's kind of like a mixture between wolverine and captain america as far as backstory and nice <laughs> sorry have it a little like fun that. while you do it too because uh oh, watch nice. they're gonna fly across the screen oh cool <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's great. <laughs> nice. So yeah, a little preview and all that. We're sweet as aren't we? Of what's coming up. So yeah, I'm pretty excited for the. Uh, yeah. Man of War. Nice, nice. So, Dale, um, what's what's the one that you picked up that both of us got? Before we move into the. That one, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Secret Empire. Why? Why'd you pick it up? It's uh, it's you know, it, it looked uh, you know, it's it's, it's you know, it, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's, uh, it's uh, I guess sidetracked. Uh, adventure, uh, Avenger. Uh, yeah, come on, 
gotta, gotta, gotta go with the uh, original there. Come on now. Yeah. Well, Secret Empire is a miniseries they have going on right now. Uh, not spoiling anything, Captain America is part of Hydra. I mean, that's that's there. That's known. That's across the internet. Everyone knows he's been a secret Hydra agent since. Wasn't it since last year? After was, Civil uh, War Two, yeah, it was January they this year. Or January this year. I want to say it was yeah. from Steve Rogers, Captain America, number That's like right, nineteen, yeah. or and it something was right like that. after Civil War Two was finishing. Was right up. after Civil War yeah. Two, and yeah, there's a, you know, it's kind of like a famous panel now where he's standing there and he says, you know, Hail Hydra, and people are like, what the, so yeah, this is kind of the continuation and culmination of. Uh, of that storyline. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's moving into it. I got issue one that just dropped. There was issue zero that they dropped before that was the prequel kind of. Uh, I I thought it, I enjoyed it. It's a little confusing. Um, but this one has stuff in it that sets up parts of the series that you have to read this to understand a few things, which I thought was interesting. It's a it's kind of like a little twist type thing, but it also has uh, Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider-Man in it. So um i'm not sure how much of it they show i think it's just what a couple pages two probably yeah because yeah, like that's pages. a new series that launches this year which i'm actually pretty excited Starts about next I, month. I love peter parker spider-man yeah. i mean i like miles morales too but mm-hmm. peter is my Ooh. Guy. i don't want to spoil anything but hmm i knew about that so i i already knew yeah <laughs> the pure of heart how's that happen right huh yeah. So, so, <laughs> so it's it, it's it's a little thing in there that yeah you definitely need to read it. I mean if you're online or anything like that, I mean you definitely know um, as he should be <laughs> <laughs> typing in there. She's I not know. watching anymore, so she's being a wise ass. So. It's all good. You're a little late, but you know, hey, I'm slow. <laughs> so I'm um, slow. So yeah, Secret Empire. I'm who's watching? Is Allison watching? No, she's. It was just an intermission. She's back to watching the play so no. uh final one of course that we all picked up and that is some teenage mutant ninja turtles i didn't pick that one up oh you didn't yeah. i, did I thought you did no i was thinking Bummer. you picked it up so oh i have two. Uh, oh that was the one that i forgot he got the xo that's okay. right i forgot i got it backwards so um but yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I mean, you can't go wrong with turtles. Turtles are turtles. Uh, this is a cool little uh, issue. Um, it's not the darkness like some of them have been recently, I know. So it's definitely kids can read this one. Um, it looks like to a point. But it's, you know, some of theirs have been fairly dark recently from what I've heard. And, yeah, the main, you know. the main IDW series of turtles that they relaunched a couple of years ago has been, it's been pretty dark, you know, it's kind of back to its roots, you know, turtles prime as it's referred to now, the original kind of run from uh, Eastman and Laird was, I mean, it, it was pretty lighthearted and all that, but it still had some pretty dark themes and some violence and stuff. And they've kind of parroted that here in the, in the IDW series, but yeah, you can never go wrong with the uh, IDW turtles. It's been great. Yeah. Yeah. T- I mean, it's the turtles. I mean, come on. Turtles are turtles. <laughs> so. That's something she, with her. So yeah. I don't know what to we say. We, we don't know sure. either. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's with her, you know. Yeah. Um, it's something that's happened on her side because everyone else can get it. So I don't know. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm baffled. But all right. Pickups. So we, we all had a couple of pickups. Uh, Dale had one. Um, you had a couple and I had a couple, of course, the first one, I mean, we both have on the top, so we'll show off and it goes along with turtles and we picked it up because it's a one shot, which a one shot is just a simple issue. It's not, it's yep. single contained issue. Exactly. It's you know, one, one and yeah. done. Yeah. And that's it. And it's a Funko edition. So it's got the Funko Michelangelo on the front, which I have that Funko one. So do you, yeah, <laughs> you know, well, we both do, I got yeah. two different Michelangelo's, uh, upstairs, but, um, yeah, and if you, I'll just show briefly, but if you look in it, and it's hard to see on this, but uh, it's all the characters in there are Funko Pop characters. That's how the whole thing's drawn. So it's all based off of the Funko characters and everything. So it's very kid-friendly in a sense, and, you know, they've got other ones that they're, it looks like they're coming out with. Uh, it's throughout the month. We've got uh, Strawberry Shortcake. There's Ghostbusters. um, 
is that Judge Dredd? Yeah, Judge Dredd, and then uh, Judge X-Files. Dredd. I'm in X Files. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna definitely keep an eye out for. I'll pick up Ghostbusters and I'll pick up Ghost uh, Judge Dredd. I don't care about X Files and Strawberry Shortcake. Eh, yeah. yeah. Not what? my cup of tea. No know, strawberry shortcake. I know Come you on. want it. Damn straight. I mean, what? <laughs> X Files catches my attention. No. Uh, I, I, I've never got into X Files. I just couldn't no? do it. Oh, no. I, I, I watched Living Crap out when, yeah. when I when I was first out. It's uh-huh. good. It was a good show. I just yeah. I don't I know why. The recent revival wasn't very good though. Well, you, you just you, you just can't remake that. You Re- can't. Revival Part Two comes out uh, too soon. Mm. Next year, actually, you, you early just next can't. year, maybe. But yeah, they uh, did I for can't. another. I just can't. So. Um. Well, Dale. Yes, dear. What'd you get? What'd you pick? Well, up? you know, I, I nosed around a little bit and I found something that really ca- caught my attention. Uh, as I have found, I've always enjoyed Punisher since you know I first caught Dolph Lundgren playing Punisher back in the day. Yes. Don't ask. Any hooch. <laughs> Um, 12, 12, 12, anybody? 12? Yeah, it should be a, his 12, 12 issue. 12 issue. Yeah. 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 It's a 12 issue. And I found something to read for a little while. Does it, if I'm, if I'm going to get into comic books, let's, let's, let's at least do something that fascinates me. Yeah, no, that was a, that was a great run. It was the, uh, the Ennis and Dylan run, uh, part of the Marvel Knights imprint. And, uh, if you like Punisher in Daredevil season two, a lot of the good stuff that we saw with him is actually from this run. A lot of the Tom Jane, a lot of the good parts of the Tom Jane movie uh, come from this run as well. Like this is like probably the most influential Punisher run that you'll ever read, and this is the beginning of it. So, well, it was de- definitely your influence. You're like, if you're gonna get one, go with one that you know. Yeah, Ennis did, and I was like, "Okay, yeah, I'll trust gonna, you." If you're gonna I do fi- Punisher, you do that one. I, I figure if you're gonna, yeah, if anybody's gonna know, it might be you. Maybe, <laughs> possibly, yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. So you have to you have to let us know what yeah, you think. I'm, you I'm, I'm gonna start checking it out yeah. just so you know. Yeah, you know, you're you're gonna get pulled into comics, you know. Before you know it, you're gonna start buying them. <laughs> I'm sucked in, man. <laughs> be like, damn it, really? <laughs> Crap! One more thing, I gotta spend money on. Aren't they doing? <laughs> isn't there Deadpool versus Punisher crossover right now going? on? That's what I've. That's the series that's I've got. Like one of the polls. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's on my poll list. I, I hope. Say, I thought that that's one of the ones you'd show me that you were I getting. So I haven't read the second issue yet. I read the first. It was. It's good. It's not. It was interesting. So I I don't always base it off the first comic. You no. should never base it off the first one you no, read. You really you always can't. give it all a chance. You know, like four or five comics in and it's still crap. Then I suggest you should stop reading mm-hmm. it and buying it. You know, I mean, eject, eject, eject. Yeah, yeah you know, back away. You know, whatnot. So, yep, yep. right. You picked up well, two of them from uh, there that are from the greatest superhero of all time. I mean, come on. <laughs> Yeah, I decided to add to the Batman collection uh, this time around. So there's one story that I'd always wanted to read, and that is Batman Mad Love. So those of you who are familiar with the character Harley Quinn, she was actually created for the 1990s Batman the Animated Series. And she was such a great character on that show and had such a following that they decided to write an origin story for her. So it was actually written and illustrated by Paul Dini and Bruce Timm, who were the like two of the main guys behind Batman the Animated Series. And so they wrote Batman Mad Love, and it tells the origin of Harley Quinn. Eventually, they went on to actually adapt this comic specifically into a multi-episode um, arc of the actual cartoon. Which, as we all know, Harley Quinn wasn't an original comic book. You know, she was the cartoon first. Yep. You know, that's where she was created and was so popular because of that. That's like, that's when we started to see her grow and, you know, move into the comics and, you know, do all that stuff. A lot of people don't realize that, that she's she's one of the rare ones that that happens to because most of them, they've already been created in the comics, yeah. you know, by this time. You know, they've thought about the characters that they're using. She was completely different, yep. you know. I mean, but it's Batman the Animated Series, come on, it's 
it's an amazing i mean funko's got their uh, dc box that they've got next month uh the legion of collectors um and that's ba- batman the animated series and I'm like, yeah, they they did a really good job with that series. They really oh, did. Oh man, it's such a great series. I mean, I, mean, I, I love X X Men cartoon. I mean, it's it's my past. You know, it's my childhood. But Batman the animated series was on at the same time, and watching both as kids, yeah, maybe X Men is a little bit better because it's you know more actiony and it's more colorful and stuff. But going back and watching both of those series as an adult. There's just there's so much in Batman the Animated Series that you miss as a kid mm-hmm. because these villains are so well thought out. A lot of them are even better. Yeah. Like the best Mister Freeze version you're ever gonna see is from the cartoon. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's they're just so good. I mean, and, and Mark Hamill as the Joker. I mean, come on, dude. Best best Joker ever, hands down. Best Mister Freeze ever, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Come on, get it right. <laughs> get it right, uh, damn it. Come on. <laughs> I mean, you know, so I, I, I'm, a, I'm a little, I'm a little disturbed when you said, you know, my childhood was, you know, the '90s. I'm like, oh, man. I, I guess that's why I got like, the OMD uh, moniker. <laughs> You're like, I was in the Air Force then. I, I oh, guess God. I got the OMD moniker for that. <laughs> it's like, well, you were yeah. Private Dale back then. Wah, wah. <laughs> That's why you're OMD. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, it, it was rare back then that you see an original character created outside of the comic books get a following. And yeah, that's yeah. What, so this is what happened. They created mm-hmm. her for the show. She was in a couple episodes. They decided there was a series of comics at the time that was called Batman Adventures. And they tied into the Batman, the animated series cartoon. So it was like the comic books for that cartoon. And that's where they told the story of Mad Love. And it was so popular, they're like, all right, well, act, let's actually make this as a cartoon. Yeah. He was getting some water. Oh. Like Shadows. I know. I told didn't him even to, hear I him. I told him to be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> well, what'd you expect from Silent Ninja's son? <laughs> well, uh, we should have told him to come in real quick and, you know, jump on the mic right next to you and just tell the three comics. But, oh, well, yeah. it's all good. It is what it is, you know. Ah, can, I love to have a run anyways. So. We'll point and giggle. <laughs> so I picked up a series here, which there's a few more that I need to get into it before I actually start reading it because I want to read it all, you know, to catch up. But um, recently DC has their little – it's it's a mini series inside of two different series, and that's Batman and the Flash, and it's called The Button. Um, someone keeps vibrating the whole that's table. Me. <laughs> it, it picks up quite a bit on there. Does it really? Yeah. It's because it doesn't have a shock mount on it. Damn it. I forgot about that part. <laughs> um, Kinky. So, but yeah, it's called the button. Uh, if you don't know the button they're talking about, it was first, you know, hinted at at the original Rebirth comic, which was, you know, Batman and, you know, Wally coming back. Wally West, the one of the Flash, mo- multiple Flash that are out yeah, there that we've seen. Original Kid yeah. Flash, yeah. Flash number three, mm-hmm. you know. So they they did a rebirth for when they restarted everything. They didn't really reboot. They just rebirth back to, you know, rebirth, not afterbirth, rebirth. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, oh, my. So DC Universe afterbirth. Oh, Gross. God, that would be awful. Awful. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Anyways. I don't, I don't get it. Can you explain it? <laughs> Anyways. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah so it's it wasn't a full reboot they kind of re-imaged it back to you know before the new 52 series started it didn't completely delete the new 52 series but it, they're they're like okay new 52 was more of like a, a dream in a sense you know or nightmare however you want to look at it type thing um, but new 52, so it's still there, but it's not there. So this goes before that time. This is after, uh, was an after flashpoint flashpoint. Yeah. So they, they have a mini series inside the Batman and the, uh, flash series called the button, which is kind of explaining a little bit more about the button that they found, which the button is Watchmen, which Watchmen, most people know the Watchmen from the movie Zack Snyder directed, uh, and the uh, big blue guy with the big blue dong hanging around. That's where people, you know, <laughs> see it. So that, that um, is the worst case of blue balls ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 
this I, I read Batman first that Batman 21 it was good you know I liked the series the series many little mini series of it but it wasn't the greatest right I started ro- reading Flash number 21 and I'm like this was phenomenal I mean it was so good so I'm like okay I was gonna do Batman but I decided no I'm gonna start over I'm gonna read the Flash Rebirth series and I picked it up you know I got the uh, the first eight on trade so we've got issue one through eight um amazingly enough they had eight on up they didn't have one through seven there which was weird you know i was like okay whatever yeah, you know that's cool it worked out yeah because that was the only flash one that they had too mm-hmm. and then uh and then of course i've got 11 through 20 missing i'm missing eight or nine ten and 15 or not 15 16 so I have the rest of them there. So I'm going to have to hunt those down. But yeah, I picked them all up because they were all 50% off. All the back issues minus the uh, one that's not boarded there because that was still on the shelf. So right, yeah. that's not a back yeah. issue yet um, until I think 22 drops and then they'll move that to the back issue. Yeah, they usually keep yeah. the most, you know, the current one plus the most recent one before that usually is how Aussies does it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so I picked those up. Hopefully, you know, I'm I, from what I've heard, they've been really good. So I'm excited to dive into it. I think I was almost tempted to also go and buy um, the what was it, the Green Lantern, uh, one? Green Lanterns, or Green Hal Lanterns. Jordan and the Green Lantern? I think Corps. Green Lanterns was. Is that the one I'm? That's the one with Simon better? and Jessica. Yeah, I haven't liked that. Or one. no, it was Hal, Hal Jordan. Yeah, yeah, Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps has been awesome. Yeah, that's what I. It's been yeah, awesome. I mean, Flash is probably the of all the series that I've read from Rebirth, and I'm not necessarily caught up on all of them, but I'm reading a, a few of them. I'm reading Flash. I'm reading Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. I'm reading Aquaman. I'm reading Batman. Mm-hmm. Reading uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws. I think there's uh, uh, Nightwing. There's a couple, but oh, Teen Titans, mm-hmm. and then also Titans. Uh, but yeah, the Flash has probably been my favorite of nice. all of them. But Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, and the Green Lantern Corps is right up there. Nice, nice, yeah. And that's the one. Didn't they uh, start a mini series in it, uh, kind of based like the Blackest Night and stuff like that? Was yeah, that, sort of. Uh, they're kind of going through, uh, you know, reestablishing a lot of the other Lantern Corps mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, through that series. Well, in yeah. both series, really. Yeah, but yeah, no, I was almost tempted to pick that one up and catch because that's right about the same. That came out about the same time as. Flash dropped, I think. Yeah, yeah, so Hal, yeah. Hal 20, Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps, Green Lanterns, Batman, uh, Action Comics, and Superman, Flash, Aquaman. Those were all like the ones that came out right away that, and have been on the biweekly schedule. Mm-hmm. Like Red Hood and the Outlaws is on a monthly schedule. Um, Young Justice, I think, is on like the monthly schedule. Mm-hmm. I think Teen Titans is on monthly, maybe. So like a woman, you know, that time of month, and then drops. <laughs> You know, I think just like something Bat, else comes Batgirl, out. I think, is up in you know around the twenties and stuff. So there's yeah. a couple. There's a, a lot of them actually that are going that are yeah. on the biweekly schedule. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, it seems. I mean, what twenty two issues? I mean, that's only eleven. That's eleven months that it's been going now. Yeah, just about a year. Yeah, that's because wow. it was about summer last year, late summer last year, I think. That it started. Came out. Plus, it's biweekly, yeah. so there's a couple of months where there's the five weeks in the month, and uh, so you've gotten like three issues in a month i think once or, i think january we had like three issues or something yeah one, one in the first those. one in the middle and one right at the end mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. one of those so, one of those months yeah. was kind of like that. So, so um and then we got yeah um picked up uh batman the long halloween so it's a quintessential for any batman collection if you're collecting batman this is always like either the number one or the number two that you buy to read along with like the Dark Knight Returns and maybe the Killing Joke. So it's probably Dark Knight Returns, Long Halloween, and the Killing Joke are like the three go-to Batman comics. But I mean, it's written by Jeff Loeb, artwork by Tim Sale. So you know it's going to be a great story. I actually had this in a trade. I had some issues with the binding. It was kind of, you know, falling apart. Plus I loaned it to a buddy. Not sure if I'll ever get it back. So, uh, you know, our our LCS was having a great deal on their trade. So uh, He's calling you out, Chaz. <laughs> So hey yo! New, <laughs> so this one's a new edition. It's got like the glossy pages and everything, and you know, nice new binding. I think there's like a new forward from someone. Uh, Chris Nolan, I think, actually wrote the uh, the forward. New forward by <laughs> some guy that wrote in the book. We don't. No, know. I think it was. <laughs> I think the last one I had was like Chuck Dixon, 
or something, or maybe not Chuck Dixon, but uh, Denny O'Neill, I think, did the forward. And this one, I think, had Christopher Nolan because he's talking about how important this was. So, yeah, Batman The Long Halloween. Nice. Sweet. Yeah, dude, it's freaking good. You need, you still need to read this one. Yeah, that's on my list to read. Uh, well, I mean, I'm starting to fall behind again. I finally <laughs> read three comics last night. I'll, well, I'm saying I'll read more tonight, but I know what I'm going to be doing later on, playing some games with this guy here probably. So. I don't know what you're talking about. You know. uh, I was I was not partying tonight. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Kidding. You know what you I'll know, be doing. We'll probably be playing some games tonight because uh, the girlfriend comes back tomorrow night, so uh, I won't be able to sit on the couch every night and play games like I have been. So might as well oh. get it in while I can. Uh, we, we, just, we just get her to That's join in. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> you <with> that. <laughs> oh, that's great! Nicely played, great. nicely yeah. played. Yeah, exactly. It's all set up, all set up. So, um, so yeah, this uh, this is what we picked up. Uh, at this point in time, this is what everything looks like up close. All right, sorry for this little interruption, but we decided to go to another store. We went to. Good old Hall of Justice. I've been there a couple times to get some comics and uh, collectibles. But, yeah, we went there just looking around because I wanted to complete something. And we ended up getting more free comics and all kinds of stuff. So, Because there's any better of the word than free. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> so they had a lot of good stuff there. So, Dale, what is one of the comics that um, – because we both got – two of them that are the same because they had a limit of four there instead of five yes so what's one of the ones that you got that we didn't both get that is different yeah red red sonia red sonia that one there mm. do you know anything about red sonia not yet but i'm gonna find out <laughs> looks like it's from dynamite comics uh which is a smaller publisher not huge <clears throat> um compared to like the DCs and Marvels and stuff like that. But um, it doesn't look like that was a technically a free comic book day one, but, but yet, you know, Hey, still free is free. Exactly. Free is the, free. It was on the free book table. Yep. I'm in. Yep. Exactly. So <clears throat> try it out. See what it's like. You'll have to let us know, you know, we, we, next we will time, find out next podcast there. So me, I decided I was going to pick it up at All Seas, but there was other ones that I wanted first. And I got Guardians of the Galaxy, the all-new Guardians of the Galaxy. And it's also got a little excerpt in it for the Defenders. So the Defenders, which this is going to kind of, it's not going to tie into, but it's going to go along with some of the uh, new Netflix show that drops August 28th. There you go. So I figured, you know, what the hell, let's... Uh, get it and you know check it check out. out check it out hopefully hopefully it's good but yeah um yeah the new all new guardians of the galaxies uh every month twice a month and uh, i'll read it and see if i like it and maybe i'll go from there but i think this one is kind of more based towards the movie because you've got baby groot in it and stuff like that so the hell Let's but you know what it. they say so, only one way to find out exactly and it's free, so. The free is free. What's the other one you picked up? The other one I saw was, it looked similar to the backwards again that the uh, the uh, Zelda one was. And I was like, all right, we'll check it out, just see what we think of it. And I'm not even sure how to pronounce this, so. I would say it's uh, Tomi. Tomi Junji Ito. Yeah. It's a language I can't speak, but dang, I'm going to try it out anyway. Junji Ito. Junji Ito. Something, something like that. But this was, yeah, it's just like the other one, you know, it's going to mm, be all same. Just like Zelda. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So at least it's English on the inside, you know. Yeah, we'll we'll figure a, it out. It's a, It looks like it's a fairly simple comic to read, too. Not too much for wording. So I was like, you know, what the heck? We got, we, yeah. we got one backwards one. Might as well get another backwards one. Yeah, yeah. So they at do, least a bit backwards to me. Every year they do a Halloween comic fest where they ha give away some comics too, and this was one of one, one of them. So they had some know. spare ones left over. They're yeah. like, yeah, hey, let's give it on a free comic yeah. book day. People want to get them; they'll take them. You yeah, know? Absolutely, because the stores have to pay for these. These aren't given to them. Correct. So all these comic book stores, when you go in and get these for free, they're paying for them out of their own pockets and give them to you. And somehow so. they make money doing it. Yeah. So. 
<laughs> Not sure how, but who knows? Who knows? What else did you get? I picked up um, one that. You know, I was like, eh, why not? Let's see how it's like. But it's a Scooby Apocalypse. So it's made by DC. DC does the Scooby comics. Um, this is, and oh, it's also got a another, Hannah another, Barbera. Another Halloween Fest, yeah. too. Yeah, it's from Halloween. So um, I thought this was going to show off some of the new Hannah Barbera stuff coming out, the crossovers that they have with DC. But no, this is something else. This is uh, completely different. But yeah, this is. The preview of Hanna Barbera also, so some stuff like Future Quest, Wacky Raceland, Flintstones, and then of course Scooby Apocalypse, which it's more of a darker Scooby comic, but yeah, it's just little bits and pieces of the comics. So I don't know; it's worth a shot. Maybe I'll end up, you know, buying them. Who knows? Who knows? But hey, that's the advantage of free. Exactly. Find, find stuff that you're not sure about. Check it out. <laughs> so, what's the first one that we both got? First one we both got was Wonder Woman. Yep. Wonder Woman. I don't know. I, I shouldn't have to explain it, but it's Wonder Woman. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm taking a guess. This is based off the first issue of the Rebirth series. Is what I'm taking a guess that it is because that's kind of what it looks like. Yeah, really um. Actually, it's Rebirth, but it's either that or it's going towards more the movie. Who knows? Um, Only one way to find out. It says special edition, so Mm. that's what I'm thinking. It's one or the other. I don't know. But, yeah, we'll read it and find out. We'll check it out, see what what we like. So next up, this one is actually not one of the free comic book day ones, but it was a free one. It's from Batman Day. And they had it there, and it's like, what the hell? Let's pick it up. And it's, of course, Batman from DC Rebirth. Batman. Batman. So, I don't know. We'll see how this one goes. I don't know how this ties into it. Hey, come on. Um, it's, it's bats. Do, do we say more? Yeah. True. It's bats. True. So, it's Batman. Um, Batman. <laughs> it is bats. All right. And then so, you got a whole mess of other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We both, well, you got one more. I, pick, I, got I more. picked up one more. Yeah. You got a whole mess of other stuff. <laughs> so I finished and I was able to find the other comics for the new Flash uh, DC Rebirth. So I got uh, 9, 10, and 16 that I was missing, um, which I was like, okay, cool. Works for me. That I needed it. You know, I, I want to read the whole series. So I need every single one. So why not? Yeah. Um, and then, of course, I saw it, and this is actually the second print. Uh, I don't know if you know how comics work. Yeah, first print. In that way. Second okay. print. 82nd yeah. print. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so. First first print is, you know, the first first time through, they tend to be more valuable. Da-da-da. Yeah. Second print is if they sell out of all these. And they're like, oh, it was that popular, so they got to go with a second print. Second print means, you know, hey. They're they're doing it, but yeah, usually the price is cheaper. This says five dollars. It was actually two bucks, I think, is what I got it for. Discounts, discounts. Yeah. So I was like, all right, cool. But yeah, so so I picked that just because it was number one. I might, if I like the Flash that much, I might might pick up two through, you know, uh, eight that I'm missing. So even though you picked up the trade, Mm -hmm. who knows? Uh, We'll see. It's still, I'm still a collector, even though they're not as collectible as I was. I'm still a collector. I still like to have a complete set. This is true. This is you true. Know? That's why I need to get a lot more of my Walking Dead books that I have. You know, the ones that are just, just propping up the computer on there. Yeah, you've only, you've only got a couple. I've got through eight, and I think they've got through 13. So I got five more to go, but they're Phew. usually about 20 to 25 bucks a piece. Oh, so. come on. You're loaded. You got this. Yeah. So shit. all that YouTube money. Yeah. <laughs> Baller. <laughs> um, what? Yeah, I just showed off some. I, I showed don't. mine, so you need to show. Well, yours. after the conversation with uh, with uh, with uh, Ryan earlier with Batman, we, 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 we went looking, and I found one that looked somewhat interesting. So we're going to find out. I've got Batman Hush trait, which is looks kind of cool already. So I'm going to find out what I think about it. So I have plenty of reading here to do in the next few weeks. We did a whole unleashing on Hush uh, between Ryan and I. We and talked I, about the and whole. I, and I didn't one. pay attention, so uh, I blame this on you. That's well, it's good that you didn't, because then it's not spoiled. 
you, you, you have know, a point there. You there. Go. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really, really good one. It's it's in my top five of Batman stories. It's a, it'll be a good yeah. read. Good, mm-hmm. good. It's worth it. It's definitely worth it. So I enjoyed it a lot. It's you know I I almost picked up the um, the one that uh, the Halloween one. Oh, the one that, Ryan had. Yeah, that he yeah. got. So, but I decided to go with some other ones. So. You know, I picked up, of course, uh, he talked me into it, Ryan did, after saying how good it was, you know, that it was close to the Flash, but I just at least picked up the first trade um, of it, and I'll probably, I might just stick with the trades, but it's Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps. So, I was like, you know, yeah, I, why not? You know, let's see how it is, let's check it out, hopefully... When it comes down to it, it's, you know, as good as he says. Because I do like the Green Lanterns. I've always been a fan of the Green Lanterns. So, and this being the whole Green Lantern core, yes, I'm excited. I am hey, definitely as excited. Lo- as long as it's it. not a CGI costume, you're good. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the next item I got is the Titans. Uh, I was like, I saw it there. He was talking to me about it. And I'm like... It's Titans. It's Wally West. You know, it's, you know, we've got Nightwing and, you know, a bunch of other characters. I won't dive into spoiling it all, but I was like, why not? Let's go. This is like the, you know, the grown up version of the Teen Titans in a sense. So oh, they're a lot yeah. older, all that stuff. So, yeah, I was like, mm. so, so they've come of age and. Mm hmm. Yes. So, so yeah, that's it. So. We will continue on with the rest of the podcast now. Sorry, uh, Facebook people, but uh, yeah, you don't get that opportunity because we really can't break it in on Facebook. If I was sitting here and I could have done like I was showing you on that studio mode, I could have done it, but, you know, showed them off that way. But I don't have that option. That's true. That's true. So comics, 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 comic interest industry. Um, what this mean, what this podcast for everyone that's listening is was meant to be. And I think we kind of got off from what I really wanted to be. Cause it, it, I mean, yeah, we're not a round table right now. We do have a round table upstairs. Um, but it is meant to be a round table discussion, you know, and it's going to be each and every, you know, nerds. We can, you know, have one or two, three different cop, you know, topics or whatever. I mean, this week it's perfect for comics because free comic book day. So, this week, I have a two different topics that I wanted to discuss. First one is we did start discussing it. I mean, I, I wish there was a third person, no offense, but that has been more into comics. <laughs> Just because so we could get their opinion because we're always talking back and forth. And I mean, oh, yeah. we, we share our opinions back and forth, but we know at the end of the day, I mean, it's our own opinions and, you know, it's what it is, you know, uh, that's how it is. We also know there's nothing more entertaining than a Ryan rant. <laughs> so the it's not meant to rant for this or anything like that. You know, it's not meant to hate, not meant to any of that stuff. Um, my first topic that I wanted to bring up is the comic industry. And do we really need the comic industry or is it 
something that can go away or what? Because we were discussing that with Marvel, you know, and what would happen. We had a text going back and forth about like, is it really Marvel worth it, you know, to keep doing comics? It led into more of a who was controlling what and all that stuff discussion. But um, no, is is the comic book industry worth having around still? Do we need a comic book industry still? Or are we going to be okay? Would we be okay if, let's say, Marvel said, okay, our movies are doing so good. We don't need to make these comic, comics anymore. We don't need to, you know, do any of this. Let's just get rid of comics. You know? I mean, coming from an outside opinion. Coming from an outside me, opinion. Let us, you know. In the sense of, yes. The, the wisdom movie. of OMN, OMD. They're, they're, they're uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coming from an outside. Uh, and some uh, pipes and then, you know, you know, sit here with our robes on and, you know, be all fancy, cross our legs with some books around us. No. That's awesome. But yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so. awesome. Uh, train of thought, boarding at station. Um, uh, that's an opinion. To, comic books have been going for a while. They've been around for a good long while. The movie industry, you and I both know, well, we all know, that the movie industry, you have periods of this kind of movie or that kind of movie, and then it goes away. I don't see Marvel, you know, and I'm not saying they, they're they not having a good run because mm-hmm. they are having a good run. But, it's, you know, 10 years down the road, are they still going to be at it? If they still want to make money, they keep the comic books going. You know? Yeah. Because, yes, I'm not, I'm not, saying, they're, you know, I'm not saying they're making a bad run at all. But business, business-wise, a good business decision, you don't cut them out. Mm-hmm. You know? You play, you, you play for the, you, you play, play for the, uh, the long run, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, hey, we're making all sorts of money. Let's just stop making comic books. Oh, wait, we don't have anything to make movies on anymore. Yeah. I think in the long in the long run, you can, comic books stay. Yeah. 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 I mean, what do you think? Well, as, yeah. what, what's, what's the saying? That the, the only two industries that are recession-proof are uh, movies and uh, Cosa Nostra, so our thing, you know, the mob. It's one of the, what the things the mob always says is, you know, the only two industries that are uh, recession-proof are movies and, and our thing. Uh, so, I mean, movies are never going to go away. That being said, like, are these kind of movies going to go out of style? And it's a possibility, you know. it's We're to the point now where we're going to get three Marvel movies a year, you know, we could easily start getting two or three DC Comics movies a year. We know next year there's going to be three movies from the X-Men universe that Fox has the rights to. Other publishers are looking to get into the movies as well. We've got Sony partnered up with Valiant Comics. They're going to release their, They're going to start releasing their own superhero movies. So can superhero movies overstay their welcome? Like, absolutely. It's definitely a possibility. Mm-hmm. But I think just going back to what Dale says, the sales are always going to be there for at least a finite number of comics. You know, mm-hmm. they're always going to be able to, sell, you know, Marvel can always just cut it back and sell Spider-Man and Avengers and X-Men and, and they'll sell just because of recognition. Same mm-hmm. thing, you know, D- DC Comics, yeah, they might cancel the Batgirl title. Yeah, they might cancel the Red Hood title, but like they're always going to be able to do Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, that mm-hmm. sort of thing. So. Will it ever go away completely? I don't think so. I mean, it's like Dale said, it's been around for a long time, 75, in some cases, 80 years, 90 years. It's been through financial depressions. It's been through financial booms, and it's always seemed to stay at least some point. You know, it's the thing with comic books, especially superhero comic books specifically, is they're there to give people hope and give people an escape. And, you know, when times are good, we're going to get a lot of different comics like the stuff that Image puts out, which is a lot darker and independent and that sort of thing. But, you know, when times are tough, they're always going to be able to go back to superhero comics. So I don't think that the industry itself will ever go away. But, I mean, I can definitely see it scaled back. I mean, we're at a time now where you compare the the greatest time that comics has ever seen, which was in the 90s. You know, we had issues selling in the millions yeah. a month. You know, yeah. now we're now it's considered like, you know, a really good title if it sells 75,000 
yeah. titles a month. You know, we're, mm-hmm. we're seeing like every now and then a title will come through and sell a hundred thousand copies in a month. And it's like, Holy crap, look at these sales. This is amazing. Cause it's, we don't see sales that high anymore, but yeah. you also look at the nineties and that was the time when we had Marvel and DC and that was it. And then they founded image and there were, there was this big artist boom. Nowadays we have, you know, 20 different publishers. So you can look at the sales for Marvel and DC and go, yeah, look, these sales are dropping, but you have to look at the sales for image. You have to look at the sales for Valiant, IDW, Dynamite, Boom Studios, Mm -hmm. uh, all these different other companies that, you know, they might actually be seeing their readership going up, you know, Valiant readerships going up. Same thing with IDW with a lot of their titles. Like we're seeing, we're seeing growth for certain uh, publishers, not necessarily for all of them. So I don't think that's necessarily as, uh, you know important of uh, the end times for the industry. But I think it's just we're in a transitioning industry. You know, it's like kind of like what you were saying when we were in line today. Mm-hmm. There's a new nerd out there. It's, it's not the same archetype anymore for nerds. Yeah. Nerds nowadays, there's a lot broader taste and there's a lot mm-hmm. more to be offered from different comic books. It's mm-hmm. not just superheroes anymore. Yeah, you you've got a multi, uh, you know aspect of it i you know me personally i don't see them ever going anywhere um but as a business decision if marvel movies keep making a billion dollars you know and they keep you know a billion and a half two billion dollars and you've got comic books that are you know sometimes barely even scraping by and this will lead into also more into my second part you know my second question i have here after this um but as far as a business decision, what's the point of scraping by on something like this and keep scraping by when you've got the side of the business that's like dominating everything? Yes, eventually the movie industry is going to change. Mm-hmm. I don't see it for a long time though because people are loving these. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, they okay. wouldn't they wouldn't be planning. I mean, you've got Marvel movies planned out to twenty well past twenty twenty now. You, you've got DC movies pa- pla- planned out to then. You've got 14 Transformer movies. You have, you know, uh, Star Wars movies for the next 100 years because they're big time sellers. And these are pulling in people into stories that they don't necessarily want to sit down and read a comic every single, you know, week or every month that it comes out or every you know, two weeks mm. or however they, you know, however any of the series go, they, they want to be able to go to the movies or sit and share it with someone else. You really can't sh- sit and share a comic with it. Well, so well, it also comes back to, you know, what we now live in a, in, in a, in a uh, society of instant gratification. Yeah. True. True. So mm. it's, it's, you know, I, I don't see it going anywhere, but it will be scaled back. I mean, we are going to see it scaled back, but um, I won't d- dive into that because, like I said, that's part of my second question coming up. Um, I would hate to see it go. I mean, yeah. they don't need this for the – I know what you said about the source material. They don't need this for the source material. Look at all the other movies out there that they've made over you know, the 100-plus years True. that movies have been out, and there's a lot that has not had any source material. So it's one of those things where these aren't needed. Yes, it's a bonus that a lot of this stuff that we're getting nowadays, some of the biggest movies ever made come from great source material, but it's not needed in a way. Well, there's hundreds you of know. years that they can build yeah. off too. Like We don't need comic books to come out this month so that they can base a movie on it next year. Right. Yeah, got exactly. Decades of, of mm-hmm. stories that they could adapt. And, yeah. and even like we've seen with the TV shows, you know, th- they might adapt two or three favorite storylines from the comics into four or five episodes in a 20 episode series. And the rest of it, they just let the characters go where they're going to go naturally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, so they have they have other possibilities to make those movies. They can always keep building it. None of these movies follow the comics hardly, anyways. You know, so it's not like they need that. They just take the ideas and then transition them into you know. And this goes back to um, mainstreaming. You know, it's to the mainstream audience. Us as nerds, yes, we are the ones that are always going to buy this stuff. But they. And I, you know, I do not know any specific numbers or anything like that, but we're the ones that make them kind of like break even. The ones that they make the money off of are the ones that's the mainstream audience. 
that's where their money, true money comes from. Mm -hmm. So if you can pull them in, that's where you're going to do it. So if you're going to have the comics, which yes, they can start to pull some new people in. Is it really pulling in enough to make it worth it? Where the movies, they're pulling them in and they're pulling them in, in, you know, just droves. droves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing how many people are coming in. So uh, it's one of those, like it's sitting on the scale movies, comics. Well, and, there, and there's so much you know. more merchandising that can yeah. be tied to a movie release. There's advertising and stuff. There's just so much more buildup that they can do that yeah. they don't really have with, with comic books. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. I yeah. mean, look at look that at Baby true. Groot. If Baby Groot appeared in a comic and he was in twelve issues of a comic series, it's not going to take off. But you put him in a two-hour-long movie, and now you can sell Happy Meals, you can sell shoes, cups, yeah. T-shirts, collectible toys. Yeah, Just anything. St plush toys, mm -hmm. right. temporary <laughs> tattoos. I mean, it's the list. Yeah. Hats. The list goes on. You might make a billion off a movie. You make five billion off merchandising because of that movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it, that it's just it's one of those things. You know, I'm not trying to say anything against comics because I love comics. You know, I mean, I'm buying, you know, anywhere from four to ten a week. You know, I've got my fair share of comics that I get every week now, and it would s suck to see them go, but I could see that possibility. There is that possibility. I mean, Marvel shot themselves in the foot, you know, over a lot of their stuff. Now they're getting better. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I got mostly DC here, um, but there is some Marvel stuff coming out. You know, the X-Men comics that they have right now, those are really, really good. Both gold, blue weapon X, um, not, uh, which we'll talk about the Jean gray and we have Iceman and stuff like that coming out. Um, those, I don't quite interest me as much, but like the bigger, you know, groupings and, you know, the stories that they can pull from those, you know, those, right. they're really good. They were really good, but there's still a lot of stuff that's, you know, there, you know, Secret Empire is very controversial. Yeah, you know? a lot of controversy around that <laughs> one right now. Which I found it, I, I could not help but laugh. I'm like, I see so much hate against it. So much hate. And then I go to All Seas and I'm sitting there and I'm like, I just set up my poll. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, crap did they actually get it because i sent it in early monday morning mm -hmm. and i'm like they need about 48 hours so hopefully that's 48 hours enough and he can't find it and i'm like oh crap and i just heard him talking about how they already ran out of secret empire and i'm like please please and he's like sherman oh it's in the wrong place here you go and there it is and i'm like oh Nice. Thank you. <laughs> I could have picked one up for you. The yeah. shop I go to, when I went in there on Wednesday, they had 20 copies of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if I, if I went <laughs> on, yeah, I came down to that. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, we've talked, you know, there's Marvel. DC is obviously killing it right now. We've got a lot with DC. Um, lots of independent and smaller publishers, you know, yeah. Valiant's not quite small anymore. They're getting bigger and bigger. IDW yeah. is getting bigger and bigger. Dark horse is getting bigger and bigger. Um, then I mean, we see like image is huge. Yeah, now. Image I mean, is it gets no bigger joke. every year. Yeah. It's to the point where, I mean, at this point it's, it can easily take over Marvel or DC if it keeps growing at the rate it does. And those ones keep slipping. Like yeah. image is going to be the number one publisher here in two, three years. If they keep it up that way. Yeah which would be amazing. But then you've got places like, I mean, yeah, you got the Aspen comics, but it seems like they backed off a lot, you know, which from the previous, you know, a couple of years before this, they've been really, you know, they were growing, but then it seemed like they took a step back. Well, it's with Aspen comics is like, they kind of adopted, and this was from, even from a long time ago, they kind of adopted like the British TV model, which mm -hmm. is like, we're going to do a self-contained 12 issues of this series. It's going to start and end. And then we're going to move on to a different series. You know, we're going to do this and that. And then, you know, in a couple of years, we'll do a new series. It's almost like this is really the first time where they're actually growing a shared universe and trying to, to jump back in. But they're like mm -hmm. relaunching, like they relaunched Fathom and they relaunched Soulfire, which are their two flagship titles. Uh, and they got a couple other titles and everything. But they've always been, you know, smaller, kind of a more of a creator owned style. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of their artists bring in their own series that they do and they just publish it under Aspen. You know, they work with Aspen comics. They get the benefits of that, but they, it's their own stories that they tell, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. Like Lola XO is is owned by the artist, the writer artist who who does all that stuff. You know, it's her character. Mm. She okay. does it. It's just yeah. done by Aspen. Same thing with like Zoo Hunters. It's a it's a comic book series. It's written and drawn by Peter Steigerwald, who's like one of the executives for Aspen. And they've got a couple of guys on their staff that you know will do like the Aspen and the Soul, or excuse me, the uh, Fathom and the Soul Fire. But they've always been kind of small like that. Mm-hmm. Where they've, you know, and, and like I said, they'll do six issues or 12 issues of this series and it'll end and maybe it'll come back and maybe it won't. It just, that's kind of, and it's worked for them. You know, they haven't, mm-hmm. you know, they're not bankrupt or anything. They have their following and they have their fans and they're known for like how good their artwork is and stuff, but that's kind of what they do. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, and with some of those, you know, that's, to, they're, they're not overdoing themselves, overextending themselves, doing anything like that. Yeah. Um, which, which, you know, it works for them. It definitely works for them. Um, I just realized that this is showing, and I wonder if why she can't see it, is because it's for some reason going under my name, not Nerdology's page, even though I go to Nerdology's page. Oh, weird. Huh. You know? know. Yeah, because I was sitting there fiddling with, you know, what I was fiddling with was some of the... Uh, you know the, the the privacy and whatnot. See if the, see if changed anything through share, but I don't see anything different. That yeah, it's or... not your share that's causing it. No, so I, it's nothing from you. You can't do anything about it on your end. It's it's either her end or it's the fact that it's sharing mm-hmm. on my page. But um, mm-hmm. yeah. Anyways, so we don't want to sit and talk about all that. You know, it is what it is. But I'll, um, keep I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Um. So. <sighs> I guess to conclude on the question, kind of finish it up is, is the industry going to go anywhere? Probably not. Is it going to go through some time, some tough times? It always will. I mean, look at Marvel had to sell off all their properties in the movies to just survive, you know, and they, they had, they had, they really had no choice. I mean, they were at a point where they were going to file bankruptcy and they would have disappeared. No, they, they had to do what they did. I mean, it kind of sucks now because they've finally been able to move into movies and everything and develop yeah. a film universe that was so great mm-hmm. that, you know, Disney's like, yeah, we got to buy that quick. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it does, you know, it does suck that they had to do that. But I mean, that's just the ups and downs. DC did it too, sold themselves to, you know, Warner Brothers about 15, mm-hmm. 20 years ago too. So yeah, right. yeah. It just happens sometimes. Yeah, exactly. And at least, at least Disney's okay with what uh marvel does in the comic side yeah they they make a pg on the movie side because that's just disney Mm -hmm. but the comics they let them go freely you know and they can go as car hardcore as they want on certain things do what they want you know stuff like that at least they haven't put their hands in that pot yet yeah they they, you know know, they've done a good job they're like look the movies are awesome they're making us money we can market the living crap out of all the movie characters and the movie likenesses and that's what we'll do and you know you guys just do your own thing Mm mm-hmm yeah, exactly. Dippy and sales exactly. are not like at this point, it's still turning a profit. Like Marvel, uh-huh. co- Marvel entertainment is still a profitable thing. So yeah, just like psh, they'll figure it out. Yeah. They've got pros down there real quickly. If you're uh, watching, please um, share this with your friends, whatnot, you know, if uh, the Facebook live, if not, if you're on YouTube, go over to Facebook, watch the neurology page. I'll figure out why I'm not transferring over to there correctly which is really weird but uh um there is a closed group um nerdology 5280 which i just started up and running again so we can start more discussions kind of like this continue the discussion of the nerds yeah twitter is great but twitter you can only get so many letters in you know so many characters yeah well and it's and you don't know who's gonna yeah. see it or anything like that yeah you know? where this closed group anyone you know i pretty much let anyone join yeah there's rules i'll kick them out you know whatever if you cause some issues i'm the one that runs it you know but uh you'll have to see the at least the group so you can get on there so we can you know start discussions and continue this stuff on from what just more what the podcast is cool. you know and get more people involved and talking and whatnot and then yeah. we can find a- 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 ask the questions we don't think about yeah because yeah. we're, we're not going to think of it all i mean yeah i know everything but still i mean i don't always think about it at the same time i'm just kidding when did you become a girl? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nice. <laughs> Ouch. No. You and I both know that that's, that's our role. <laughs> mm. So the second question that this kind of led into was dealing with, um, which I made the few comments um, the other day, why I don't read 
the Jean Grey, you know, spinoff, the Iceman, you know, stuff like that. There's some of the DC ones I probably won't read just because me personally, I think they start to saturate the market too much. You know, there's there's too many single off people that are doing it. You got these groups. Everyone knows who the X-Men is. I mean, there's few characters that, you know, truly can go off on their own and create a lot of a story on their own. Mm -hmm. You know, Wolverine's one of them. Yep. You know, Wolverine, uh, you know, uh, Logan, we can see he has so much material they can do and he can do so well on his own. But seeing like a Jean Grey or an Iceman, who knows how that's going to go. Yes, they're taking a chance, but I think it's also coming to the point where they're just trying to throw shit on the wall and see if it sticks. Yeah. on some of it and i think it's sure. you know with their issues that they've had i think it's something that they shouldn't be um i should probably close that door close <laughs> so i i'm i'm thinking that it's it's too much all the you know that they're putting out there because you think, you think it's got, almost an overload and i and yeah. i wonder if that because I, I again this is part of my lack of knowledge but when he's talking, you know, the huge um, <clears throat> comic boom of the 90s, did they have that many different out there or were they down to the, you know, the main characters at that point? I don't remember for sure. Um, off the top of my head. Uh, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, obviously, you, you know, they have. Did. They did have know, all the. Yeah. So did they have that many offshoots the, at that the, point as well? In the 90s comic boom like we'll use x-men as an example because that's yeah. the one that set the records so in Look the 90s him. that's yeah. the one that set the records ha ha set the records suckers <laughs> I'm, gonna have to let, so, I'm gonna have to ask you to step outside coming up in the <laughs> com, so coming up in the 90s you know in the 80s you had one comic and it was uncanny x-men in the late or in the early 80s like 84 they launched new mutants which was a new teenage x-men group that were called the new mutants so you had two x-men books mm -hmm. then you had wolverine start his own solo title in, in 1988 so then you had three by the end of the uh or i get before wolverine came out there was another x-men comic book that was launched called x factor so that's four by 89 you had a fifth x-men comic which was excalibur which was based in, you know, they were a London-based superhero team that had a couple of the characters that used to be X-Men, and now they're over there. So you had five different X-Men books going on at the time. They canceled New Mutants with issue number 100 and turned it into a new comic series called X-Force. And X-Force number one sold five million copies okay. in just one month. This was in 1990, or maybe 1991. It, 1992, they... They went back in. Well, it was still late 91. They went back in. They said, all right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take the characters that are in X-Factor right now because they're the five original X-Men. We're going to bring them back into X-Men. We're going to branch that off into two different X-Men titles, Uncanny X-Men and X-Men. So that's three books. You keep the Wolverine ongoing. You change the team for X-Factor. You keep Excalibur going. Now, instead of five books, you have six books. Then one of the characters who was super popular at X-Force was a dude named Cable. He got his own miniseries. Then he got his own ongoing series. So that's seven. And by 1993, Deadpool had his own series. So you had eight X-Men comic books going on all at once. Hmm. True. Hmm. You know, they and did, it was, they, they it did was, it was still huge at that point. Oh, and they were all selling very well. Okay. They did something similar with Spider Man as well. They had Amazing Spider Man up to that point. Then they launched it with Amazing Spider Man and then Spider Man. Mm -hmm. Right. And then eventually they had Peter Parker's Spider Man. They had the Sensational Spider Man. It was to the point where in the 90s there were four or five different Spider Man books because they were all selling phenomenally well, too. But in the 90s, you had, you know, comic books were a lot more because people weren't all about their phones and electronics and stuff like that. You know, you had it's a whole different, you know, uh, people, group of people doing it, you know, and reading it where now people would much rather get that instant gratification mm -hmm. and getting, you know, stuff on on the fly. Yeah, right away. Yes, you can read, but it takes months to really get some of those stories completely out and done. Uh, yes, these two a month are great, um, but it still takes time. A movie, you're done in two, two and a half hours. And it's, it's the you same know. as a TV show with a cliffhanger. Yeah. How, many, how many people actually come back to next season? They're like, uh, 
But you didn't catch my attention. Okay, I'm done. Yeah. It's only the hard, you know, mo- and mm. most of the cliffhangers that you hear about are on nerd related shows. Mm. You know, there's there's still cliffhangers. Don't get me wrong on other ones that I've seen on other shows that aren't nerd related. But the really big ones, I mean, Walking Dead, for example, yeah. the nerds were pissed off. But then the other people, eh, whatever, eh, you know, we'll mm. move on to something else. for and now. Ex- exactly. And, yeah. and, they, and they may even come back. Yeah. You know, they're like, oh, caught my attention. All right, not interested anymore. Yeah. There's a possibility as well. Yeah. And that's, that's, but, but, but unfortunately, because, uh, because we now live in that instant gratification society, it makes things really tough. And that's why I'm saying, that's why, you know, I brought up the question is it smart to be doing all these offshoot comics now? All these single episodes are issues when you're in an industry that is so volatile, volatile that one day it could be here, next day it could just tank. Mm-hmm. Or you could get lucky and it can grow quick. You know, what was what was the one? There was one, was it last year? Or was it the Black Panther comic that was selling a couple million or something like that? Or, you know, yeah, or, last uh, year yeah. Black Panther number one yeah. launched to like 300,000 issues. Oh, yeah. 300, and 000, yeah. I, I, Black Panther is right now, at least when I looked at the numbers last, which was maybe a month or two ago. Black Panther is still the number one selling Marvel title right now. And the next like three best selling Marvel titles are X-Men Gold, X-Men Blue. And uh, at the time it was Inhumans versus X-Men. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why you're getting in. You know, we, we have two Captain America titles instead of five. But now we have, you know, six or seven X-Men titles again. Mm-hmm. Because right now they're selling. Yeah. So these the team books are popular. Which characters do people like? Let's let's give them a book and see if it if it works. If not, no big deal. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I give it to Marvel for trying just different things, but I think it's almost getting to the point where they're going to start really oversaturating it with too much. I mean, we're going to get we got these all these different Avenger ones that they still try and do. We got bunch of spider-mans you know i mean that are going right now yes we got spider-man homecoming coming out that's why they're trying some new well, stuff new and, spider-man title launching yeah. you know peter parker yeah. the spectacular spider-man's launching that's, next month well, that's like four different spider-man titles i think four right or now five or yeah four or five yeah that's not including I mean, like spider gwen and silk and all that yeah i mean so they've got so many of those i mean deadpool has a ton of them you know and that's why I know I forget and I don't remember the titles that Marvel is can- canceling, but there's a bunch of them that they are canceling because they're just not doing good. Yep. So it's like you're trying these, but some of them, you, it's like you need to make an even smarter decision. And I, I'm waiting until the point that DC has to start canceling some of them because they started they've they've been throwing everything out there. I mean, you've got every single one of theirs has a separate issue. You've got what? Three, three different Superman ones right now. Yeah, there's uh, Superman. I think new Superman, Superman, and then Action Comics. Yeah, and then there's uh, the Batman family. He's got sh- multiple. There's well, Batman you know. alone has. He's got Batman, and he's got yeah. All Star Batman. Yeah. Then there's Nightwing. You know. Then, then you there's Batgirl. Uh, Batgirl. And yeah. then there's like Birds of Prey, which also uh-huh. has Batgirl. Uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws. Red Hood and the Outlaws. There's the one, the like Super Sons, I yeah. think, with Superman, yeah. and uh, Batman. Superman's kid and Batman's kid, mm-hmm. you know. So there's a lot. There's a lot out there. Nightwing. Yeah. I don't Nightwing, know. I can't remember yeah. if we said him or not. So. I mean, there's. But the bat titles always sell. I mean, yeah. Those yeah. ones are always pretty popular. Yeah, they've always <laughs> been. Uh, you know, bigger, but yeah, it's, it's like, but all these other small characters, I understand them trying to do it, but is it really worth it at this time in the industry? Is it really the market for it? Yeah. You know, I mean, build up your other titles and focus on that other stuff first. And if it's not doing good, then start moving to something else. But if it fails, then yes, you can move on to something else, but don't try and like do too much. Then you overextend yourself. See, I wouldn't be surprised to see if Marvel or DC being the big two and just having so many characters that are popular but might might not support an an ongoing series. I wouldn't be surprised to see them cut back and maybe say, all right, we're going to do like two Avengers books, two Spider-Man books, a couple X-Men books, you know, and then bringing back like the premiere books where you're going to get, it'll come out twice a month, you know, so you only have to collect two issues, but it'll have, you know, guest star or like Marvel team up or Mm -hmm. Marvel presents or whatever, which is what they used to do in the seventies and eighties that would tell certain stories like, all right, for the next five Marvel premiere, we're going to give you a, you know, power man and iron fist. Mm -hmm. And then after Mm -hmm. that, what's going to happen is 
Then we're going to bring in and we're going to do a Thor story because he's in his own comic, but he, there's like nine different Thors now. So we're going to do a quick little <laughs> series with Thor. that, you know, and yeah. kind of starting to turn it. So that way they're still getting these characters out there. They're letting fans enjoy these characters mm-hmm. still, but they're doing it in a way where they're able to manage their loss rather than putting out mm-hmm. 10 different monthly series. Exactly. They're just doing quick mini series for each of these characters. And if that series happens to be a major seller for that, then boom. Okay. We are going to give them their ongoing series. We can continue on to it. Mm. But if it doesn't, then we know and we're not taking a major loss. Right. Yep. You know, and that makes way more sense right now. I mean, because yeah, there, uh, 75,000 copies, you know, for some of these that they're selling, that's really not that much. I mean, no, these are like, they're not making the, much at all. These are like the late 90s numbers where they were yeah. like, crap, we need to sell rights to some stuff. Yeah, to, exactly. To make ends meet. Exactly. Like, yeah. I mean, you you figure what, 75 if you do 75,000 copies at, well, these are, let's do one that's at $3, you know, because that's what a lot of the DC ones are now, or three bucks for each one. Um, $225,000 for each one. So you figure you're paying, you know, you're also making money as a company, but then you got to pay the artists, or if there's multiple artists, you got to get the one that's telling the story, you know, mm-hmm. writing oh, the yeah. story and all that. You got to get anyone involved with the publishing stuff. It's really not that much. I mean, nowadays, yeah, so what inflation. You, what, are you, what are you making you know, versus was it, yeah. what was it costing you to produce mm-hmm. it? Well, exactly. And, th- and that's also why you're like variant covers are so big and like will never go away because they can trick people into buying four copies of the same mm-hmm. comic because it's like, hey, here's our, you know, here's here's the flash and the writer is Josh Williamson and the artist is, you know, Watanabe. So he'll do the regular cover. But then we'll bring in like a guy like J. Scott Campbell and he'll yeah. do a cover mm-hmm. and we'll bring in another guy, you know, to do a cover and next thing you know, people are buying all four of the same issues. So, you know, they're making 300,000 issues, but rather than 300,000 of issue, you know, cover A and then, you know, another 100,000 of cover B or whatever, it's just, they're just doing it equal portions or whatever. So mm-hmm. that way they're selling out rather than having, you know, over you know, losing money and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it, it seems to me like that would make a lot more sense to do something like that. You know, I mean... I think it would it would help out the industry. You know, it wouldn't kill it. It would help, you know, help build it more and make it bigger. I mean, cuz they need to they need to find a way to keep it going. I mean, there's what I see every comic book day Wednesday which when everything drops, there's 40 different comics that come out now on every one. I mean, that's that's a lot for people to have to try and decide. Yeah. You know, that's mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so. You figure, even if we say, okay, let's just take this for an example. That's three bucks. Now, mm-hmm. say you're interested in half a dozen of them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 18 bucks. Mm-hmm. So let's round it up 20 plus tax, you know, 20 with tax. 20 bucks every week. Yeah. Yeah. For it, a book. That's. You know, uh, most you know. comic book stores if you're going to be doing that that's what the pull box is for that's nice because then they give you a discount you know yeah, i get 20 percent off every week off yeah, so see and see so. now you really wonder how they're making money because oh we're also going to give you a discount yeah mm-hmm. how do they make lot. money mm-hmm. yeah well uh, it's, i think that's jamie there's some news that uh that you and you and i discussed not in great detail but part of the reason why marvel is now on comiXology unlimited Mm-hmm. because digital is almost becoming the way to go. People are yeah. paying full cover price. You know, this Flash comic right here, two ninety nine. if you buy it in the store. If you buy the digital version, it's also two ninety nine. Mm-hmm. But the company, they don't have to print it. They don't have to print anything. They don't the, have to print it at all. They just have to yeah. get the file and push it over, and now mm-hmm. it's on the server, and mm-hmm. they're getting their money. You don't run out of it. You know, you're going to always have it there no matter what. They're following uh, – they uh, – they literally followed the video games industry in that way because video games started doing it with Steam. When Steam came out how many years ago and, you know, the bonus is you have this, but also 
the sales that you can do. Mm -hmm. You can't really do the sales on these in the stores all the time. They can't, these smaller shops can't do it, nope. you know, and none of the big box stores really do comics anymore. I mean, they're gone. I mean, you have like a second in Charles. Um, but even with that stuff, yeah. the publishers don't get the money for that. Yeah. The publishers get the money when the comic book shop buys them the first time. Mm -hmm. So let's say that all sees that's the local comic shop we were at today. They, you just bought 11, 12, 13, you know, 14, 15, yeah. 17, all the way through 20 DC. It's not like they're getting more money for that. Mm -hmm. They got when, you know, when the company bought it the, the very first time they get it, but digitally they're getting more money if they sell yeah. them like hey now mm -hmm. that the first 12 issues are out we're going to put a digital bundle together and people are going to buy it so they're getting money the first time that all these comics are sold but then they're able to actually do their own sales and get more money if these are sold again a yeah. different way and also they are cutting out a lot of the middlemen too okay. you don't have people delivering it you don't have all the people working at the printing press i mean yeah digital is just straight yeah. digital you but have how, a how does the digital affect the collector that's the thing though that's what's gone from the industry right now there are no more collectors because comic books they're not worth what they used to be like no, part of the boom we saw all. in the 90s is because people were looking back at comics in the 80s you know in the 80s and the early 90s thinking like oh man all these comics from the 50s and 60s and even before that they're worth a lot and mm -hmm. you know back issues and stuff still are i mean you saw all the comics on the wall oh, yeah. but it's not i saw them no I, 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 I saw them no i was new like ones 500 bucks for a comic yeah wow but there's no new comics there you know you're not going to see anything since uh, before the year 2000 you know, all the way up 2000 and now there's nothing you're going to see on that wall. No. Hardly anything. I mean, yeah. What civil war, which was, you know, that's, those are going up in price pretty quick. You know, the original civil war run. Um, but yeah, you're talking about the variants. The variants used to be an exclusive thing. You get a variant. You want to try and get a hold of that variant. Cause that's going to be worth money. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's a rare thing. Now you get each major comic has five different variants. Got five cool. different covers, you know, yeah. it's just, it's not special. They, they all have high print runs. It used to be yeah. like cover a regular series artist does a cover and they print, you know, a hundred thousand of those. And then they'll bring in like a really big superstar artist who's like known for just great covers. And they'll do, they'll maybe do 25,000, mm -hmm. 50,000 of those. So they're, they're worth something cause there's not a lot, but it's just, it, the industry is gone. Like the, the people like me that I don't collect because I want to resell. Like I want to collect a comic because I can just read the comic, but I don't have mm -hmm. to collect. I don't have to buy them on the secondary market anymore. I have Marvel Unlimited. I can read them on there. I can go on Comixology and I can pay cover price for an issue that's 30 years old, you know, or pay 10 bucks a month and have unlimited access to issues all the way as far back as the 60s. Mm -hmm. So that prospecting is kind of gone. You know, yeah. the collector really isn't there anymore. If um, I don't know if you saw, All Seas has a box on their their table where the new comics were, um, but they have a box right there of ones that are um, ten dollars uh, a piece for each new one. But those are some of the more exclusive variant ones. But there's still few and far, you know, there's still a lot more there than what it used to be. Yeah, you get them like I bought that uh, Star Wars one, which was the um, was it Vader and Leo cover mm -hmm. that i got and it was a special variance and it was 10 bucks for the well i mean if you want to be specific 9.99 i mean <laughs> whatever yeah. you know yeah whatever. yeah uh but um yeah i picked that up for more money you know but that's doesn't it's very rare now that you see anything like that because it's just not a collector thing yeah you know? i was kind of curious about that because i'm you know i'm looking at like like the reason i asked that question is i'm looking at these walls going Five hundred dollars for a comic book. I'm like, and part of it is I don't understand it. Part of it, I admit, I don't understand it. Uh, part of it, I get it. You know, yeah. because it is a unique, unique item. Yeah, yeah. What the first <clears throat> Superman, the actual comics one, is hundreds of thousands of dollars that you can pick them up for. I mean, so. They're real expensive ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I got the, I got the one on my wall. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, Action Comics number one, <laughs> yeah. if you can find it in mint condition. There's only like 30 known mint condition 
copies of it, you know, left and it goes for well over half a million or yeah. well, yeah, well over half a million mm-hmm. dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In Detective Comics number 27, first appearance of Batman. Uh, but again, it's like you said, it's because it's it's rare and it's, you know, it's vintage and it's you know, the first appearance of, you know, one of the greatest superheroes that we've had in the last hundred years. But even some, you know, some of these other ones that were like, hey, the first appearance of this character from a few years ago. And it's like people are like, oh, no, it's, yeah, whatever. It, it's lost its collectability. Yeah. Because so because, so, you know, so, so my titles. so my next question from that is, is because it's an oversaturation. OK. Mm-hmm. Are people just gonna be like, eh, I don't need them. They're not, they're not going to be worth anything. Chuck them. 15, 15, 20 years down the road, are we back into, into that same situation where now stuff is valuable again? It could be. It goes up and down. It also, you know, when a movie comes out, it kind of affects it. You know, there's New Mutants number 98 is the first appearance of Deadpool. And up until like two years ago, it really wasn't worth all that much. You mm-hmm. know, 100 bucks maybe with the movie coming out and there's just the, the soaring popularity of the character. Like there's issues... Copies of New Mutants number ninety eight now are going for five hundred bucks. When three four years ago this thing was a hundred dollars at most. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you see you see ebbs and flows. You know I one of the comics I have that was always one of the jewels of my collection was back in two thousand. Marvel launched a series called Ultimate Spider Man, and I have Ultimate Spider Man number one, and it was actually given to me as a gift, which was cool. But for a while that comic was worth one hundred and fifty dollars. And then after, you know, 10 years with the Ultimate Universe still going on and all this other stuff and, you know, fan enjoyment in the Ultimate Universe kind of died down and now that universe doesn't even exist anymore. So there's no demand for that book. That book's worth like 30 or $40 now. It's just tanked in value because right. the collectability is gone. And it's like you were saying, <clears throat> sometimes there's, you know, sometimes it, people aren't interested in that character anymore or that mm-hmm. book anymore. So you're going to see a drop in the value. For all we know, something can happen. You know, Tom Holland is a teenage Spider-Man again in the movie. It's a great movie. You know, if they come out and they're like, yeah, there's a lot of Ultimate Spider-Man influence in this movie that people might want to start seeing what it's all about again. They're going to look for those issues and it's going to make the, the value right. go back up. Right, right. So, I mean, there are certain ones where the value is always going to be there. Action Comics number one, mm-hmm. Detective 27, just mm-hmm. because of who those characters are. But other characters, especially one like Spider-Man, where there's you know a gajillion titles with him in it, you're going to see it ebb and flow ebb and, and flow. rise and fall based That's on what I was curious about. who's popular at the time. Yeah. I was curious about. Yeah. So, I mean, everything has its cl- collector things out there. There's collectors for all kinds of stuff. But I think comics world has moved in towards more of like the actual physical like things you know we got pop figures that are collectors you know you get action figures you get stuff like that those have become more of the collector part that a lot of the comic book people out there go for nowadays you know something there to show off to people you really Mm -hmm. yeah you can post up a comic on the wall but there's only so you know only so much that you can do um with that where you know, with uh, these action figure stuff like that, you can show it off a lot more. True. You know, True. I mean, plus they don't get as ruined as easily, too. Yeah. You know, I mean, a comic, you, a simple little fold in it, and that could decrease the price by half. Oh, yeah. You know, Absolutely. easily. So it's just like a sports card, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just simple little things like that. So, wow. That's uh, we definitely went around full spectrum on the comic world. Yeah, no, <laughs> just thinking about that, yeah. <laughs> but that you're <laughs> probably actually probably actually like a pretty decent stopping point too. I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, nice. I think naturally it's, got to the end there. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh. So I mean, uh, to conclude all of it, lo and behold, I mean, the industry's not going anywhere. Uh, yes, it would be smart to kind of cut back on some of these, you know, uh, offshoots that they're doing and do like what Ryan was talking about. Um, and you know, a lot of the collectability is definitely, yeah, not what it used to be. I mean, yeah, it's definitely not there as what it was. So that's, but times have changed, you know, people have changed, things have changed. So, so it is what it is, you know? So, but Hey, you know what? Here we are still buying comic books. So, Exactly. I I just like to read them. You know, I, you were mentioning about for a while there, you're like, I don't even know if I want to buy comic books anymore. 
and now you're yeah. starting to buy them again. You well, got a pull box. They, yeah, they relaunched X Men. Yeah. It's like, all right, well, I got to collect these titles at least for like volume one, and then maybe I'll just start reading them digitally again after that. But but now you're <laughs> starting to pick them up and mm-hmm. 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 get it's stuff. A, yeah. It's always fun to get them. But I, I was I've always liked comic books to read them, not necessarily to collect them. And yeah, everything. like to, it takes up a lot of space. Plus, it's nice to support your local comic book shop. Yeah. I mean, it's an industry, you know. Yeah. It's, an, it's part of the economy and everything. You're keeping people employed. Yeah, I, I mean, I, that was the one thing I was going to say earlier is, if the industry did go somewhere, it wouldn't be a hard hit to the economy as what a lot of things would, but it would hurt a lot of people because there's a lot of people involved in comics and whatnot, but there's other stuff within those companies that would keep the companies afloat. So they wouldn't, you know, whatever, you know, Warner brothers is making their movies that, you know, even if they're, you know, not doing as, if they don't do as well in the movies overall, they have all their TV shows and their, you know, animated movies and you know, all that stuff. So, you know, but, so, yeah. well, you know, get, get more, you know, good looking girls in the comic book stores as opposed to, you know, your t- stereotypical, you know, uh, uh, Simpsons comic book guy. You might get more nerds in there. That's all I'm saying. Well, you're not. I don't think you'll ever see in the comic book stores like that, which you. Yeah. But like the Comic Cons and stuff like oh, that. Absolutely. I mean, you you can see gamers. There's a lot, a lot, lot more, you know, uh, gamers that are up there you know, that are, yeah. And stuff. Yeah, they, they, yeah. And they don't mess around. Yeah. And there's, there's They're a lot serious. of them. Yeah. There's a lot of them out there. So on that note, like we always to finish up, hopefully you enjoyed this episode 28 nerds of the round table free comic book day. If you did, please hit that like and follow down below. Don't forget to share us with your friends. Let's uh, let's get the word out there. We've uh, this is a welcome to the episode twenty eight, the all new Nerds of the Round Table, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, this isn't. We're not going to be the discussion like we were with news stuff like that. We might talk about some of the stuff, but it's more Nerds of the Round Table round table discussion, like it should have always been. You know, let me break, let me break my out my saw. Goal. We'll fix yeah. this table real quick. Please don't. Just yeah, this corner's come in <laughs> handy for our drinks. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right crap there. So about Then that. we lose our drink places, so, you know. <laughs> and they're kind of, the legs are underneath those corners, so yeah, de- this it's, table it's might, a minor you know, detail. Don't worry about drop it. Yeah. there, you know. <clears throat> hey, might have an issue. So, so, yeah, if you did, yeah, hit that like and follow YouTube. You know, please leave us a review on iTunes. Let's start, uh, you know, then we can get the word out to more people, you know. Listening to us on iTunes or whatever device or program or whatever you listen to this podcast on, please let us know. And if you do drop one, let us know. Uh, Shoot us a tweet or go on Facebook, whatnot. Um, Also, I do need to get the link for the Facebook group on there, too, because I do not have that link down below. But um, we we definitely need to add that in uh, for it. But the, it is a closed group, but I'm, like I said, letting anyone in. But there's some rules that are posted up in there. and yeah. Trust me, I won't hesitate to peace. See you. Yeah. Sorry. What Sucks he said. Um, so, yeah. Uh, also, with Facebook, we also have Instagram. Like I said, Twitter. Ryan's got his Tumblr and MySpace. Um, yeah, go check out all that stuff. Uh, as long also with the Patreon page, uh, I kind of got it started, got a little away from it. I do need to, you know, get on it and start hopefully getting more to promote Exclu- it out there. Ex- exclusive yeah. content. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Find more stuff. Um, but Patreon definitely, if you feel like it, drop a couple bucks on there uh, as subscription, get some perks out of it. You know, we'll get more perks as the time goes on yeah. and figure it all out and uh, help out the channel. You know, we can bring you bigger and better content. So that's what she said. <laughs> Wait, what? It works. She, she wants bigger, she wants better, and she wants more. And then she'll be content. Yeah. Oh, you said content. Sorry, continue. She wants more content. <laughs> so <laughs> that might not be a good thing if she's saying I want more content. Yeah. Like, uh, it's like, well, all right, which one of my friends want to join oh. in? Oh. Damn it. <laughs> Anyways. Anywho. Um, so, yeah, thanks again. 
upcoming podcasts. Uh, we just dropped below on this episode too. Please go check that out. We have Unleashing this week, which we are going to review Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Are you going to see it? Yeah, I'll see it probably tomorrow or okay. Monday or Tuesday. Cool. One of these nights. I'll yeah. Sure. Cool. Cool. So we'll dive into that. Great movie. Great, great movie. Going to love it. Going to love it. Uh, if you are going to see it, please stick around through the credits. There is five post credit scenes and they actually in the theater, a guy from the theater came by and said, please sit in your seats after because there's five post credit scenes and it is through the whole entire credits. So nice. there's some that are fun and there's some that affect the universe. So let's just say <sighs> so spoiler. Yes. I don't know if that's really a spoiler. Shut up. <laughs> uh, as always, though, please don't forget to unleash your inner nerd. And we will uh, see. Well, you will see us or hear from us on the next nerd in a couple weeks. Peace.